Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this week's Women in Astronomy, we are going to talk about Maria Mitchell and her contributions to astronomy. So, who was Maria Mitchell? Well, she was lived from 1818 to 1889 and was born in Massachusetts in the United States. Now, like many of the women astronomers we've looked at recently, her father was an amateur astronomer. So there was a family tie to astronomy, which certainly helped at the time to allow women to be more involved when there was a background there, encouraging their interest in things like astronomy and mathematics at times when that was not encouraged for women. Now, Maria Mitchell actually founded a school back in the 1830s and worked with students as well there. Now, in terms of science, what did she contribute to science? Well, she actually did quite a bit. Uh, well, she is very well known for the discovery of a comet, and that is known as Miss Mitchell's Comet, and comets are named after the person who discovers them. So in general, if you discover a comet and are the very first person to ever see that comet, it would get named after you. And in 1847, Maria Mitchell observed this comet and not only observed it, but calculated the orbit of the comet. Now that's a lot of work. Today, it's much easier to calculate because we have computers to do all of the hard number crunching to figure out the orbit. Here, you'd have to observe the comet, make very accurate measurements, and thinking we're thinking the very early times of photography. So most things were done by looking through the telescope with your eye. And you would have to measure the position at multiple times and then do calculations by hand to figure out what the orbit of the comet was. Now, she also worked on tracking the positions of the planets as a way to aid navigation. Navigation at this time was very difficult. We didn't have modern GPS or anything to track where you were at sea. So if you wanted to know where you were, you had to use things like the sun and the moon and the planets to help navigate and figure out where you were. So that was another way to do it. Of course, you had the sun during the day. You'd need the stars and the planets at night to be able to help you navigate. In 1865, she was appointed the first female professor of astronomy at Vassar College and was also the observatory director there. And one of the big things that she worked on was observing the sun and looking at sunspots. And in fact, in 1873, started making daily photographs of the sun. So again, we're in the very early stages of photography here still. It was not as, you know, well developed a, a thing as we have today. So to be able to take those and to keep track of all of the photographs that were taken and all the photographic plates that it would be at the time trying to be able to look at the sun but it gave us a permanent record that we could see not just what somebody drew or not just what somebody wrote down and recorded but actually records that you could go back to again later so the rise of photography and astronomy at this time was very important and maria mitchell was quite involved in that now she was also an activist in many ways and was involved in things like the anti-slavery movement the women's suffrage movement and working to increase the presence of women in both science and mathematical fields Let's go ahead and finish up with our summary. And what we've looked at this time is Maria Mitchell, born in Massachusetts in 1818, discovered a comet and became the first female professor of astronomy, and advocated for the advancement of women in both science and mathematics. So that concludes this discussion of Maria Mitchell. We'll be back again next week to talk about another woman in astronomy. So until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.